I'm Joe James. This is a second video in the license plate recognition series in Java. In the last video we looked at an overview of the license plate recognition system. In this video we're going to look at how to load the training data. So this is one of the images in our training data. The first thing we want to do is convert it to grayscale. So we convert this to a grayscale image. We get each pixel is anywhere from 0, which is black, to 255, which is white, in a grayscale image. Most of these pixels are going to be either 0 or 255. But uh, our image is going to look like this as a grayscale. And it's going to have pixels, right? Rows and columns of pixels. And what we want to do is figure out, well, we're looking for this top row here of, of white, where we can shave off the top, crop out the top and bottom white rows of data that we don't want. And one way to do that is to take the sum of all these pixels here. It's going to be 255 for each pixel that's white, right? So if, if, if in a row like the top row where all of the pixels are white, the sum is going to be 255 times the number of columns there are. Let's assume there are 100 columns in this, this image, which there's not, but there's, there's going to be more than that. But if there are 100 columns, then it'll be 25,500, right? 25,500. So the first three rows you could see are all white, are going to give us very big numbers. And then after that, we get into some black pixels in the row, and we get a smaller number. The number dips way down. So it's pretty easy to see this transition here from all white pixels in a row to some black pixels in the row, right? And these ones all have some black. And then you get back down here again towards the bottom, and there are some white, white rows that are all white. And you can see that transition as well. It jumps right out because where all the pixels are white, you, you have basically the maximum number, 255 times the number of columns. So that's what we're looking for is these, these two edges here, the upper edge and the lower edge. So this, this is the upper edge where we get the, the last row of all white pixels. And so first step we're going to do to find that row is take the sum of all the pixels in that row, in every row. Take the sum of all the pixels in every row so that we get this little array here of numbers. And then we're going to find these transition points using a for loop. So that we can find these two key rows, which is the upper edge and the lower edge of our actual data. And then we're going to crop out the white space, because we don't care about the white space. We care about the actual data, the numbers. So we're going to crop out the upper edge and the lower edge. We're going to crop out this image. So how do we do that in our code? First, we do have an int array for char size, where it's only a two item array of integers. 20 by 43, I told you that's the dimensions of the pixels that we want to use. We have 860 pixels. Each, each um, character image is going to be cropped to 20 by 43, cropped and resized. So this is just kind of a fixed constant for the size of our, our number images. And then this is labels. Uh, this array list of strings, is this is the training labels, right? So we are going to load in our training data in this order. We're going to use these as the labels for the known data that we load in. And then we have the training data itself. We're going to put this into an array list of integer arrays. So one character, let's say an x, is going to have an 860 integer array. Right? This is 860 integer array, and then we're going to add that as one row in the array list. So the array list will have probably 36 items, right, because we have 36 different characters, and each item is going to have 860 integers in it. So that's basically our training data. That's what that looks like. Now we have four different training files, like I, I said. We have, uh, I'm we have file 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to slap all those into a, an array of um, files of training data that we need to crop out. We're going to crop out the upper and lower rows, and then we're going to crop out the um, 
the vertical edges of each character as well, and then load them into the arrays. So our training function looks like this. We start out just by reading those files in and then convert them to grayscale. Each file we convert to grayscale. We set up this integer array for row sums so we can calculate the sum of the integers or the pixel weights of the grayscale image for each row of pixels similar to what I just showed you. So we get this row sums and then we're going to pass that into a, a little function that, that finds the upper and lower bound, right? It checks to find the transition points to find those upper and lower bounds. And there's just two. It's an int array, right? Vert bounds is going to be there's two elements. There's an upper bound and a lower bound, and we're looking for those. So we're going to pass in our two. Right now they're just zero, right? But our vert bounds and the row sums. And after we get those vert bounds, we'll take a look at this uh, get bounds function in a second. After we get those vert bounds, then we can crop this into a sub image. We're going to crop out the upper white rows and the lower white rows, the bottom white rows that we don't want. So we delete those. This gets, get some image does that. It crops off the upper and lower white space. And then we are going to resize the image to 43 pixels high because that's our fixed height. And then I'll display it so you can see what the image looks like at that point. So now let's take a look at the get bounds function. So we receive bounds, which currently are just zero, and those row sums that we calculated. Were you going to use a for loop? We have just a Boolean flag here if we found the upper bound yet. And then we're going to iterate through those and look for a transition point. We're looking for a transition point using just a less than or equal to comparison. And when it transitions below the, the um, all white row, then we'll say, hey, yeah, we found the, the upper bound. Now let's find the lower bound. And we're looking for the next transition point using this less than. So this is just a test to see when we find the transition point. Um, and when we do, we're going to flag that. And we're going we're gonna to add that item to the, this bounds thing. And then we return bounds. So we, we found two bounds using just an if else uh, inside of a for loop. So now that we've found the upper and lower bounds, we've cropped the image and then we've scaled it down to 43 pixels high. Let's take a look at the run of that. So I've already compiled it. Um, go ahead and run that can see what the output images look like. They look like this. Right? These are the output images. They're only 43 pixels high, so the resolution is reduced. But we've cropped out the upper white rows and the lower white rows. Then the next step will be to slice the characters vertically. We want 20 pixel wide images of each character. And then we're going to load them into an array. So how do we do that? Well, we have to find, we're going to call these edges. I'll uncomment this. We have an integer array list called edges, which gets the edges. So there's an unknown number because each one of this has a different number of characters in the, the training image. So we'll get the edges. Uh, I'm going to show you that function in a minute. And then we're going to add the grayscale data for each one of those characters to the training set after we slice them out. So these two are pretty straightforward. I'll show you these two functions real quick. Get edges works exactly like if you followed um, what we did to find the upper and lower bound of the rows. Get edges is doing exactly the same thing, except it does it vertically instead of horizontally. So we're taking the sums of the columns, and then we're looking for transition points where it transitions from all white to some black and some white. So we start out by iterating through all of the pixels, getting column sums, and then we look at those column sums to find the transition points uh, using an if-else. If 
And that's it. So we identify those, those white spaces, those edges between the uh, columns. So we can crop each character out of the training data. So after we've, we've found all those, those edges, those vertical edges, we're going to convert each piece of training data, each, each image of a character, into an array. So we have an image to array function that does that because we want an array of integers so that we can zip through this very quickly when making comparisons to identify an unknown image. Okay, so what does our image to array function look like? Uh, this is just nested for loops, iterating through the rows and columns of the uh, character image, right? We're using char size and adding those to an array, and that's it. And it does that for each edge. So now we have an array list of training data, and with each of the four images in the training data set, we add each of its characters as a new row in that array list. So we have 36 rows in our array list, each one of which is a, a labeled training piece of data, right? So that's it for loading the training data. And lastly, I added this kind of helper function so that uh, I haven't commented out, but you can play with it. We can display to the screen the image of a character from an array format. So we have an 860 integer array. This will convert it back into an image and then display that image. So we don't really need that in the operation of our program, but I used it in coding and developing and debugging. In the next video, we'll look at how to slice out the characters from a license plate, and then how the um, algorithm works for character recognition using our training set that we just loaded. So tune back in for the next video. I'm Joe James. I hope this video is helpful for you. Thanks for watching.